Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. And a very special thank you to Dot Weir for being here to present on Shedding Light on Common Bacterial Removal Techniques, a review of her clinical cases. After Dot's presentation, there will be a short Q&A. So please find your chat icon and put any questions that you may have uh, for Dot into the chat for this call. We'll try and get through as many as we can. And now I'm delighted to turn this over to Dot Weir, who really needs no introduction, but I'll just say she's a champion of wound hygiene and bacterial management. And good morning, Dot, and welcome. Good morning, mm -hmm. and thank you for having me uh, to talk about one of my favorite things, which is wound cleansing, is something I find myself lecturing on frequently, and I'll give you a little bit more background on that. So, so one of the main ones was about a year and a half ago, I was involved in a panel called Wound Hygiene and uh, on a wound hygiene project where there was actually a paper that we published and it's called, you can find it at woundhygiene.com. And I had always been a little obsessive about cleansing wounds, but this really helped me to focus the, on the fact that we did a very bad job of it. And so when, when you really start looking at, at therapeutic and peri-wound cleansing, of course, we know what it is. It's using fluids or devices or something to remove the loosely adherent contaminants, devitalized material, just coagulum, different things that are sitting on the surface of the wound. But we're usually focused on what we can see. And so uh, the other thing that I really thought about or, or was made aware of with the Wound Hygiene Project was how important it is to also cleanse the peri-wound skin. In fact, uh, as a result of the paper, our recommendations were that we cleanse 10 to 20 centimeters out from the edge of the wound, or at least where the previous dressing was sitting. And I think the other kind of patient that I think of is that person that we've had in a multi-layer wrap or contact cast that's been on for a week, how critically important it is for us to clean that skin. And so I encourage you to get the wound hygiene paper. Uh, and, and, and we're going to talk about one of the tools that I'm so thrilled to have that helps me focus my cleansing better. Uh, but I do, just from a global standpoint, encourage you to, to really look at the wound hygiene paper. So let me, let me give you a little history. So I was at a meeting called Yuma, the European Wound Management Association, several years ago. And I saw a presentation where they were talking talking about, actually talking about a debridement pad, which I'll show you in some videos in a moment, uh, the Debrasoft pad. And uh, so this was a, a pa this was a, a patient example um, that belonged to a gal named Claire Morse, who's from the UK. And so what you're looking at is that the top picture is looking at using the moleculite, looking at a leg that clearly has bad venous insufficiency, a lot of scales, a lot of debris on the skin. So when it's fluorescent, what you're looking at, and I'll define this in a minute, all that red, you're looking at bacteria. And so she, the whole point with this was how well she was able to clean it with the Debrasoft. And if you look at the pictures over to the top, right, you can see she cleaned it a lot. Now the, the bacteria was a little bit more um, dispersed. That's what you're seeing when you see that red. She uh, scrubbed them up a little bit more and then had very little left there. So I saw that and I was fascinated with the pad, but I was already using that. But I was fascinated with this, this imaging device because I'm like, I got to have one of those. Uh, and that was really the time I really got excited about wound cleansing. So anyway, so I went back um, to Buffalo where I was at the time. I'm in Saratoga Springs now. But um, so we had some folks come. Uh, Ashley and Michael came from, uh, well, first I called Moleculite. They were in Canada and they, they said they really couldn't talk to me about it yet because they were still working on their FDA um, approval here in the United States. And so once that all happened, then uh, jump ahead. Uh, Ashley and Mike came to visit me in Buffalo, New York, and we, we, we used it in our clinic all day. And then I had to have one. So anyway, we then changed our, our uh, location. We opened up a brand new wound center in Saratoga Springs, New York. And so as part of our planning, this was a brand new center, never been open open and we were looking at our capital purchases and so we wanted an ultrasound cleansing uh, ultrasound debriding device but i wanted the moleculite and so uh we opened in december or january of 2019 and then of course what happened in march is COVID hit so of course hospitals were hemorrhaging money there was no capital to be had so then we jumped ahead to 20 and in early 2020 like around march or april i started asking for it again and there was still you know they were still struggling a little bit with capital equipment and so i talked to my medical director uh, who also happens to be my husband and 
and of course can't turn me down for anything. And what we decided to do, because I wanted this so badly, is to purchase it ourselves and gift it to the hospital. And so that's what we proposed to our hospital. And I, I didn't mean to make them feel guilty, but that's when they said, you really want this. And so we're going to go ahead and get it for you. So come June, enter June of this year, we were able to get our Moleculite. Um, Ashley Kane, they have really good training um, that they come on site to help you learn. And then they also have um, uh, some good online training. So, so now we use it on a daily basis and use it to help us see what we can't see with our eyes. And you're going to hear another presentation later. Well, two really good ones. Uh, Chuck Anderson's going to talk about some amazing he, work he did. But Tom Serena is going to come back in, later and talk about the predictability of, of clinicians and or the ability to predict where uh, bacteria lies. And, and this is the second time he's done a big study like this. And I think you'll be very surprised at, at the outcomes that, that we really are very bad at predicting what kind of bacteria we might be looking at on a wound. So I'm jumping ahead of myself. But what I want to spend the rest of the time doing is sharing with you some cases of how I have used the moleculite and, and really how it helps us target our cleansing. So again, just to identify what we look for, and if I, I don't have a scientific brain, somebody else will have to explain to you exactly how this works. Uh, but when we look at flor and under fluorescence and we, and we look at the wounds that we're taking care of and the skin especially too, when you see this red color, you're looking at bacteria. We're not looking at infection. That's the thing we can't predict, but we are looking at bacteria presence. That's at least 10 to the four. So it's greater than at least 10,000 colony forming units of this bacteria on the, on the skin or the wound. And so you know this is a bacteria that we need to go after. So that's the red color. And then when you see this sort of hot white color, bright white color, that's when we're looking at pseudomonas. Now you're looking at one, the left picture is actually dressings that are in a trash can because it's amazing when you take these dressings away, what you can see on them. And then the picture on the right is just a leg. And what you'll see is, is any place where there's wound and it's healthy blood or collagen is going to be black, which is counterintuitive. And then scales and skin tend to look this sort of green color. But when you see this hot white, that's an indication that that's something that we absolutely need to go over and that is a go after and that is pseudomonas. So sometimes you're surprised. And I'm going to throw a few of these in along the way. So I hope you can focus on that left picture. This is a, a wound that was just opened up. It, it was it was a seriously purulent wound, and um, it had been to, it had been to surgery. But as we took the first packing out that day, there was a serious amount of of just creamy, bloody drainage. And so thinking that it was going to just shine with red, I I've, uh, used the moleculite on him, and, and amazingly, it wasn't there. And so you can see some scarlet color here. You can even see some between his toes and we got to think about what's lying between these toes because it's a lot trust me and a little bit down here where this other stab wound was made to drain his foot out but not nearly what I would have expected and again that drives home the message we don't we really can't predict or see so here's another one. If you look at this wound on the right, you see all that surface debris. And while it's not fluorescing red, which I would have expected it to, there's definitely some, some things hanging out on the skin that we need to address. But again, we're still going to clean that because what may not fluoresce today may fluoresce tomorrow. Because if we don't clean well, then there's going to be just a grocery store for bacteria and they're going to find their way there and they're going to be happily um, sitting in that debris. So again, visually, we're going to clean it, but still didn't fluoresce like I expected. So here's some other photos that really uh, drove me to just really, really want this so bad. And again, these are not mine. These were some that Moleculite uh, let me use so that it enhanced my teaching about wound cleansing. So if you look at this photograph, you've got necrotic tissue up here in this wound. You would expect there to be bacteria there. And there's some debris up here. You would expect bacteria. And then there's some more superficial wound down. I don't even know what part of the body this is, but there's some more 
su superficial wounding down there that you would probably not pay that much attention to. So let's look at the fluoresced picture. Of course, yes, there was a, a, some red there. We would expect that and up here. But look at what is sitting on this skin down here. In an area that we probably may put a protectant on, we would clean it, but maybe not expect to find that kind of pseudomonas hanging around. Again, so it drives home not only that we need to clean wounds, but we need to clean the peri wound very well. Here's another one. And this is another good lesson here. This is the, obviously the fifth met lateral edge of a foot. And you can see this was a wound that is almost closed. So it doesn't mean that there may be enough bacteria there to keep it from closing. But what you do notice is this macerated skin around the edge. And then there's some debris that looks like it was just left over from a previous dressing and a little bit of superficial wounding down here. But again, not real impressive. And it still seems that that wound is uh, on its way to closing. And it probably did. But when it was fluoresced, you would not believe how often and we, what we see in terms of macerated skin. Macerated skin just harbors all kinds of bacteria. So even though this wasn't enough bacteria to keep this from closing, look at this fluorescing. And then up here, this debris, again, more looking at pseudomonas. So we, again, it just focuses on the fact that we've really got to think about that peri wound skin and realize how much uh, bacteria that macerated skin can harbor. So as I teach people to clean, you know, a lot of us clean with guys. I do love the Deborah soft pad. We, we do use it, but you know, it does add a cost to the care. And so many of us clean with guys. And so I have always told people, you know, if you're going to clean with guys, remember that guys is just threads that are twisted into uh, fibers that are twisted into threads and then they're woven. So as we clean those, those, oops, I didn't mean to do that. As we clean those those threads get coated with debris. So they're, it's not gonna be as effective cleansing. And so we wanna change our gauze out frequently. So here, here are two examples. Now, the one on the right, we are using an ultrasound debriding device. This is the very same foot, but on different days. And so as you look at that, as we're cleaning, the dark part is the actual wound and the uh, the bright stuff on the outside is actually on his peri wound skin. And I was showing this picture to somebody and they said, yeah, but look at all that stuff that's running over the wound. Well, we're going to rinse the wound finally. But of course, yeah, that's a very effective way of cleansing. Now, let me show you this one. And, and the interesting thing is when you're using it, um, you somebody was taking this photo for me and your, your hands are fluoresced. You can see what you're going after, which I'll show you again more, but look at that gauze. I'm cleaning the junk between his toes. Look how much pseudomonas is stuck to that gauze and I'm just spreading it all around. So again, really showing that we need to change our gauze out frequently. If we're going to use gauze, you know, use it wet and then change it frequently. And you can see the little pile of gauze that's already behind his foot that's sitting on the tray underneath those toes. So, you know, you would never, ever be able to see that with your own eyes. And so, again, this is a loop that's going to continue, but you can, again, see how much is hiding in that crazy gauze. I get so excited when I talk about this stuff. Okay, so here is a wound, and this was just from last week, a patient that has some pretty major venous leg ulcers. He has He's 96 years old, so we, we are challenging. We're really challenged to get him to close. But, but anyway, we're getting there. And uh, you, so here is his wound. You can see a lot of, of, I wouldn't call that necrosis. This is just an adherent coagulum. Uh, this is a venous ulcer. And actually at 96, he has very, very good perfusion. And so a lot of times we're looking at these exudates that we tend to want to call slough. And truly slough is a byproduct of inflammation. So it maybe is, but it's not necrotic tissue. It's just densely adherent debris. But when you go over to the moleculite image, where you see most of the bacteria is hanging out on this skin up in here. There's some down here. The actual wound part, while it does have some scattered areas of red fluorescence, is really not where, where it is. And so, of course, we're going to go after that. So I'm gonna share with you a couple of videos. This was the same gentleman. And I'm gonna do them one at a time because I, I thought I'd play them all three at one time, but then it, it almost makes you seasick. So let's look at this first one. So this is using a Debra soft pad. And uh, uh, this is uh, one, 
when you try to hold the device and, and do the cleaning yourself, sometimes you get a little messy, basically it gets a little hard, but uh, I'm just showing that as I'm going after, you can see some of the bacteria that's back now on the pad, it's going to come back on. It's just, I don't know what happened to me there, but anyway, what you're, what you're seeing is me going, I can specifically find the bacteria that I want to make sure I get cleaned off before I redress and rewrap this man's leg. So here's another one, again, showing me cleaning just some of the period wound with the Debra soft and um and you could do this with gauze i'm not trying to say you should all you know that's the only way to clean but it does do a lot better and you can flip the Debra soft pad around so that you can clean in different areas but again i'm able to target the the uh, debris that is harboring some of the uh more significant bacteria and then this last one is when i'm actually going to try to finish off uh getting the the rest of the fluorescing bacteria off uh, you can see it there i can see it in front of me as i'm doing it and it helps my targeted cleaning um, uh, and it's, it's just an invaluable tool i get really excited talking about this and so we are we have this out on our we only have one we have it out on our counter all the time and, uh, and sometimes we have to sit and wait while somebody else is using it. I'd love to have more, but uh, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. But again, it is a tool uh, that we use frequently in our practice. Oops, let's go to the next one. There. Now, this is that same gentleman and he had had some kind of foot surgery. So just to orient you to what you're looking at, this is his second toe, but there's no bone in it. For whatever reason, he had some past surgery where they, they left an appendage that didn't have any bone in it. And so again, look at the maceration that is there. And it was quite tender. Um, and so even at 96, I don't know what we would do, but we uh, we did send him for some imaging on this. Uh, and But this, again, was just, just last week. So here is how that web space fluoresced. So we have to go between these toes, um, macerated tissue, but just in general, anyone who has uh, lower extremity wounds, if we're wrapping them, you really, we really need to focus on the toes because you can see all kinds of things. Now, we jokingly call this toe flossing. So let me show you when I floss his toes. So I'm using some gauze. I'm going to slide it through. Now look at the bacteria that I'm picking up. And, and this was actually quite painful for this man. So I, I just didn't, I couldn't continue because it really did cause him some pain. But also I want to show you, I want you to look at the, the thumb of my glove as I did this. So now my gloves are contaminated. You can see I've got bacteria on there. So anyway, because it was painful, we stopped. And what I did was I used hypochlorous acid. We have Vosh in our clinic and I did a 10 minute soak. And the majority of that came up where you still see a concentration, albeit lighter, is actually where a lot of that very dense callus and uh, macerated skin was so but we left it at that because uh he was tired he was he was uh it was uh, pretty tender for him and we sent him on for some imaging and i don't know the outcome of that so last one i think i have on here is again this is the pre-picture and uh we have a we were using um a dressing where we were worried about moisture so we passed some zinc based barrier macerated skin in here and then this is the the picture this almost looks blood red doesn't it um but you know it's, it was it was really hanging out really more at the edges we needed to get that macerated skin off and so this is uh uh, after I had already, we, we put a Vosh soak on and then this is my uh, cleansing again with gauze, but now I'm going to flip that gauze over frequently. But you can see under the image uh, with the fluorescence on, you can actually see where you need to be to get it cleaned up. And again, uh, see it's on my hands, but sorry if I'm making you seasick, but I was trying to hold, the, hold it and, and do it myself at the same time. Uh, but again, I was able to find and see exactly where I wanted to be. So anyway, going to the end result, this is where we started. And this is what it looked like uh, going back. So that's what it looked like when we started. That's what it looked like after I cleansed him. And this is what he looked like after I, was, I cleansed him. So I was able to find all of those red and bright green areas and get it cleaned away. The la oh no, this is my last one. This is really interesting. This is a lady. Let me see if I'm running out of time. Okay, I'll hurry. Well, this is a lady who... Um, she had an old Achilles tendon repair. She had a big scar here and um, a 
basically a venous ulcer. So uh, she, this was huge when we started, but you know, a lot of this is, is pretty well closed. We are, this is the main one that we're healing with or dealing with. You can see a little bit of, of debris, but this is how she fluoresced. So uh, this was a lot of intact skin. And I didn't want to go really scrubbing hard on that because it was intact skin. So what I did instead is we addressed the wound part and then I just coated her skin with some bacitracin. And we, we tried two patients last week, put bacitracin on one and some mupirocin on another because we had her in a multi-layer wrap. So didn't do a lot of scrubbing, did normal cleansing, put some bacitracin down on that skin and took the wrap off a week later. And while maybe this is a little bit of scarlet color down here, but you can see the bacterial load is down farther. So, um, so that, that's again, something that we've learned that will be helpful if we're looking at bacteria in the peri wound, because you, if you think of course that that bacteria is going to stay in the peri wound and not go onto the wound, well, of course it is. And so uh, we have found that hmm, maybe that's a good idea. But again, you can be surprised. I This man on the left, this was the first visit that he had last week and I fluoresced him to see you know, what kind of bacteria might be there. And a little bit of pink up here, but for the most part, again, it was a little bit of a surprise to me. Uh, similarly here, while we're going to go after that and clean it, I would have expected this to look like this. That's not the same patient, but it wasn't. Uh, but even though we're just in this, we're just gonna use our regular vision and know that we've got to get that wound cleaner. Uh, sometimes Times it will surprise you. And so I think that's what you'll find with Dr. Serena's talk later on today, that we can't predict it with our eyes. And so that's where the moleculite has come into play for us. So remembering that infection de detection is still, well, not just infection, but infection detection is a clinical skill, not just a microbiological test or a fluorescent image, but those um, the fluorescing absolutely helps us recognize where it is, but because knowing where that enemy lurks is always going to be helpful. And we're in our practice just realizing what the molecular is going to be able to do for us. And in the meantime, it's been a fascinating journey to be able to learn. So um, I'll take some questions now and I remind you to clean it like you mean it. Yes, clean it like you mean it. Dot, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, we actually are right up against the time. And so I'm going to have sorry. to- I'm sorry. No, no, it was fabulous. So I'm going to have to cut it there, but I do invite everyone to join us over on the next call, which is just about to start, which is Dr. Charles Anderson talking about a diagnostic pathway for wound-associated cellulitis. And thank you, Doc, for, for okay. uh, a fantastic presentation. Have a great okay, day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Enjoy.